Now that we went over definitions and basic properties for inverse trig functions, uh, let's look at some applications, um, just exercises regarding derivatives and integrals. So let's start with derivatives. Let's say we want to differentiate the function square root of arctangent of x. So we have the function arctangent of x that is plugged inside the square root function. So we use the chain rule. Uh, we get the derivative of the square root function, which is 1 over 2 square root, evaluated at the inside function. So we get 1 over 2 square root of arctangent x, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the function inside, so in this case, derivative of arctangent x. Since the derivative of arctangent x has been established to be 1 over 1 plus x squared, we multiply this 1 over 2 root of arctangent x by 1 over 1 plus x squared, and we get 1 over 2 times x squared plus 1 times square root of arctangent x. Let's say that now we want to differentiate the product of the root of 1 minus x squared with arc sine x. Because this is a product, we start out with a product rule. So we have derivative of the first factor multiplied by second factor unchanged plus first factor unchanged multiplied by derivative of the second factor. For the derivative of the first factor, we have the function 1 minus x squared plugged inside the square root. So we use the chain rule, we get 1 over 2 square root evaluated at 1 minus x square, multiplied by the derivative of the function inside, which in this case is negative 2x. So we obtain negative 2x over 2 square root of 1 minus x square, multiplied by arc sine x. And then for the second term, we need the derivative of arc sine, which, which we have established to be 1 over square root of 1 minus x square. So for the second term, we just get, get root of 1 minus x squared over itself. So that simplifies to 1. The first term, the 2 cancels out. Um, and so we end up with 1, corresponding to the second term, minus x arc sine x divided by root of 1 minus x squared. For the third function, we want to differentiate x ln of arc tan gen x. Again, this is a product, so we start out with a product rule. Derivative of the first factor, that's derivative of x, is 1. So we have 1 times ln of arctangent x, plus x times the derivative of the natural log of arctangent x. To differentiate that, we have the function arctangent x that is plugged inside the natural log, and we know that uh, in that case, when we differentiate, we're going to get the derivative of the function arctangent divided by the function arctangent, just applying the chain rule, taking into account that derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So we obtain ln of arctangent x plus x times the derivative of arctangent divided by arctangent. And the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So here is what we obtain. Finally, if we want to differentiate arc cosine of e to the x, we plug e to the x into the arc cosine function, so we're going to use the chain rule again. But we need to know what the derivative of arc cosine is, and we've seen it to be negative 1 over root of 1 minus x squared. So now I plug the function e to the x in that, I differentiate, I obtain the derivative of arc cosine evaluated at e to the x, so that's going to be negative 1 over root of 1 minus e to the x squared, and then we multiply by the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. e to the x squared is really e to the 2x, so we can rewrite that as negative e to the x over root of 1 minus e to the 2x. Let's turn to integrals now. We've seen that the derivative of arc sine is 1 over root of 1 minus x squared, and we can turn that around as an integral formula. In other words, the antiderivative of 1 over root, root of 1 minus x squared is arc sine of x up to a constant. Similarly, um, the derivative of arc tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. We can see that as an integral formula. Antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arc tangent x up to a constant. Now, this later formula, we can generalize it. Uh, and look at 
an antiderivative of an expression of the form 1 over a squared plus x squared. So in other words, 1 over a positive number plus x squared. So we can use what we have for uh, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. And to do that, we need to have a 1 instead of this a squared. That's not how to do. We can factor out a squared out of the bottom. So we have a 1 over a squared that pulls out of the integral. And if I have factored out a squared out of the um, denominator, what remains is 1 plus x squared divided by a squared. And of course, this letter term, I can write x over a squared. So now I have 1 over a squared multiplied by the integral of 1 over 1 plus x over a squared. So it's very similar to what I have for the uh, arctangent, um, except that I don't have the square of the variable, but I have the square of x over a. So we are simply going to make x over a the new variable using substitution. If we take u to be x over a, then du is dx over a, or in other words, dx is a multiplied by du. So we can replace dx by a multiplied by du, and x over a by u, and we obtain 1 over a square, integral of a du over 1 plus u square. Simplifying uh, one of the a's, we obtain 1 over a integral of du over 1 plus u square, and this integral is really arctangent u. So we obtain 1 over a arctangent u up to a constant, and going back to uh, the value of u in terms of x, we obtain 1 over a arctangent of x over a up to a constant. In other words, we have established the following formula. The integral of dx over a squared plus x squared is 1 over a arctangent of x over a up to a constant. Let's see how that applies in concrete cases. Let's say we want to evaluate the integral of 4 over 4 plus x squared. Certainly it looks like uh, the later formula, integral of dx over a squared plus x squared. And in our case, a squared is 4. In other words, a is 2. So this integral of 4 over 4 plus x squared, I can pull out the 4. And then I have this integral that is of the form 1 over a squared plus x squared when a is 2. So I get 1 half arctangent of x over 2. 4 half, of course, is 2. So we obtain 2 arctangent of x over 2 up to a constant. Moving on to the second integral, we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 over 1 plus t squared. That is, of course, 4 integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus t squared, and an antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus t squared is simply arctangent t. So we obtain 4 arctangent t that we evaluate between 1 and 0. In other words, we get 4 times arctangent of 1 minus arctangent of 0. Tangent of 1 is pi over 4, of course, because tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and arctangent of 0 is 0. So we obtain pi. The third integral is the integral of dt over square root of 1 minus 4t squared. Certainly it looks like this type of integral, 1 over root of 1 minus x squared. However, what we need is 1 minus the square of the variable. And here what we have is 1 minus 4t squared. So the first thing we do is write that as the square of something. And it is, of course, 2t that we square. So that suggests now to make 2t the new variable. So we consider the uh, substitution u equal 2t, in which case du is 2dt. And therefore, dt can be replaced by 1 half du. So replacing dt by 1 half du, I get 1 half integral of du of a square root of 1 minus u square. Now we can use the formula and we obtain 1 half arc sine of u up to a constant. Going back to the value of u in terms of t, we obtain 1 half arc sine of 2t up to a constant. 
The fourth exercise is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine x over 1 plus cosine square x. Now at the bottom we have 1 plus a square. So that suggests that uh, maybe we can use the fact that integral of 1 over 1 plus x square is arctangent x. If we can make this 1 plus a square really 1 plus the variable squared. So that suggests to try to use the substitution u equal cosine x in which case du is negative sine x dx so you see that at the top in our integral we have sine x dx which we can replace by negative du and at the bottom we have 1 plus u squared so we obtain an integral that has this form negative du over 1 plus u squared because we're using substitution in a definite integral we also need to change the bounds of integration Specifically, the lower bound of integration on the left-hand side, uh, it's an integral of dx. So what this tells us is that x varies from 0 to pi over 2. When x is 0, u, which is cosine x, is cosine of 0, in other words, 1. When x is pi over 2, u is cosine pi over 2, in other words, 0. Now you know that if we have... Uh, integral from a to b it's the opposite of the integral from b to a so I can switch the bounds and change the sign and I obtain the integral from 0 to 1 of du over 1 plus u squared and an antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus u squared is arctangent u so now all we have to do is evaluate arctangent u between 0 and 1 we obtain arctangent 1 minus arctangent 0 in other words, pi over 4 minus 0, so just pi over 4. Moving on to number 5, we have the integral of arctangent x divided by 1 plus x squared. So one observation that um, we can make is that this dx over 1 plus x squared, which is part of our integral, is really the differential of arctangent x because the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that suggests that uh, we can use the substitution u is arctangent x, then du is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, and that means that our integral becomes formally integral of u du. Of course, an antiderivative of u with respect to u is u squared over 2, and that's up to a constant and u was arctangent x, so we obtain arctan arctangent x squared over 2 up to a constant. Finally, the last integral here is the integral of e to the 2x divided by the root of 1 minus e to the 4x. Of course, it looks like um, something akin to this integral of 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. But we need to have the square root of 1 minus the square of the variable. And here we have 1 minus e to the 4x. So the first thing we want to do is write this e to the 4x as a square. And e to the 4x can be thought of as e to the 2x that we square. So that suggests to make the change of variable u equal e to the 2x so that we get square root of 1 minus a variable squared. If we do that, then du is 2e to the 2x dx, and that means that what we have in our integral, e to the 2x dx, is 1 half of du. So we obtain 1 half of integral of du over root of 1 minus u squared. But this integral is really just arc sine of u. So we obtain 1 half arc sine of u up to a constant and u was e to the 2x, so in other words, our antiderivative is 1 half arc sine of e to the 2x up to a constant. Now you can turn to your homework before taking the sample quiz and the quiz.